Officer Ari out here today on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, gathering at Christ Church. We out here trying to bring some awareness to our people, trying to shed some light on this on this dark world that we living in right now. I just got a question for everybody that's out here today. Like, what's what's really going on? What's happening out here in, the, in these streets, in the world, in the entire country? Wickedness is at an all-time high. And I know we see, we've been seeing these things before in times past, but it's, it's, they didn't take wickedness to a whole new level. The Most High is truly on his way back. And we probably heard that in old times too. They've been saying, yeah, uh, we in the last days, we in the last days. We, we're literally living in the last days. Don't take this time for granted. Get your household in order, get right. Repent, that's the key. Repent, turn from them sins. Don't just praise the most high with your, with your mouth. Show him that you love him with obedience. I think a lot of the so-called Christians out here or the people that do believe in God, say they believe in God, they, they just think they can just honor him with their lips. And, that's, and that can be furthest from the truth. You gotta show action. And to show the most how you love him, you gotta keep his commandments. That's how you show him you love him. So ask yourself that question, do you keep his commandments? And if you don't know what the commandments are, they're in the book of Exodus, and, ch and starting at chapter 20. I want to go in the book of Romans. I want to go in the book of Romans. Parai, let me get, let me get Romans chapter 13, verse 11. We're going to start there. Then, Kazak, I want you to give me um, first P 2 Peter 3, 8. Hold that for me. 13, 11. So like I was saying, it, it, sin is at an all-time high. It's, we're, we're living in a lawless society right now. Nobody caring about the next person, it don't matter. Elderly, women, children, babies, babies catching stray bullets. It's like we just gloss over that fact. People just doing drive-by, shooting up the crowd. Don't care who in the crowd. They don't care who in the crowd. They just shooting. And then don't even get their target. In the last days, the Bible says it's going to be men going after their own lust. Unthankful, unholy, just pure wickedness. Our people are asleep out here. The book of Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now is, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now it is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So he's saying it's, it's high time that we wake up out of sleep because that's what we've been doing. We've been sleeping. Just going through life, lacks of days ago, thinking it's always going to be what it was. But uh, what it says, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. We got to wake up. We're not just out here for our health. This is, this is the warning. This is the, this is the, the, Noah, the Noah times. It says like in the days of Noah. And that's what the times we're in. Just like in the days of Noah, he was building that ark. That was the warning. He was building the ark for hundreds of years and he was getting laughed at. Scoffers. Until that day, he got in the ark and then the flood came. So you fast forward that till now, there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same thing as in the days of Noah were. So this was the times we in. So we're building that proverbial ark again. So. A lot of people failed that test the first time because only eight souls were saved. Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives, and then the animals. How do animals have more sense than the humans that was on the, the earth in those days? 
Uh, how everybody's doing today? Uh, Gathering Christ Church. And we just continue the message on. Why? Because we were commanded by our Lord and Savior, whom you guys know ignorantly as Jesus Christ. Okay, he was told us to go out and find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We're going to get that in the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter and 24th verse. Yeah, you get Psalm 147. Verse 19. Okay, we was given a commandment for a particular reason. Now, any average person could come out in our neighborhoods today and see uh, disorder, fighting against our own people, drugs in our neighborhoods, killings. All these particular things are happening in our particular neighborhoods. And we have to ask ourselves why, especially our people. Why, why are people specifically have to be, uh, had these things come upon us? Why is that? We have to ask ourselves, what is it about our neighborhoods? It seems like every uh, disease that come out, our people end up with it. We had one call from Wuhan, China. And for the sake of censorship, I'm not going to say what, but I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. But it ended up in our neighborhoods. Okay? Our people top the list for blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, all this stuff. Why does this particular stuff affect the black people, affect the Puerto Rican people, affect the Native Americans? On and on and on. Why? Give me Matthew 15, 24. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now we have to ask ourselves, who was Christ talking about? Who is this lost sheep of the house of Israel? Who is this lost sheep that Christ told us to go out and find? And I don't know about you guys, but I can look around and see what looks to be a lot of lost people. I used to be one myself. Mary, I'm married husband. I hated my marriage. I wasn't taking care of my children right. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my purpose. I've been crying to pastors. Nobody can answer these questions until I find out the truth. And our Lord and Savior said, the truth shall set you free. But you gotta know what that truth is. We have to know who we are according to the scriptures in the Bible. And then we can begin to solve things. So first we're going to go into Psalms 147. We're going to get verse 19. Psalms 147 and 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He showeth his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Okay? Now we just read Matthew 24 that Christ said, go on Go out and find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So let's find out who the lost sheep is so we can get a better understanding of who we're talking about, who Christ was talking about. Give me uh, Exodus uh, 1 and 1. Exodus 1 and 1. Let's figure out who this lost 12 tribes, that's lost sheep that Christ was talking about. Let's start there. We're going to take it back to the, one of the most famous Levites in the Bible, and that's Moses who was given the law, the law of God, who came out with a certain people that was given this law. And in this scripture, it's gonna highlight some of the names of these Israelites. This is the book of Exodus, Exodus, Salaki. This is the book of Exodus, verse one. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man his household came with Jacob. All right, this is, we're about to go into the names that we just read over in uh, Psalms 147 that these laws and statutes were given to. Go ahead, read. Verse 2, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Verse 3, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin. Verse 4, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Verse 5, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. Okay, that's good. 
So now we know some of the names, and, and we have a chart over here, the 12 tribe Israel chart. Um, we have a chart, and we have some depictions that show who these people are today. Because a lot of people don't know who these people are. So on, family. My name is Officer Bracey from Together in Christ Church. And today we're going to talk about a lost nation, a lost people that's forgotten, that no one talks about. They only put us on the front line, put us on the front page on headline news when there's bad things that go on with us. When there's, when there's good things, they put, chose to put it on the back burner and everything. They chose not to tell all the good things that we have done. It's always on the back, back side of a story or news. Christ was always about the laws and, their, and the laws and statutes and commandments. See, what people don't realize, they don't like to go to the Old Testament. They like to go straight to the New Testament, not realizing when Christ spoke, when Christ taught, he taught from the Old Testament. They only talk about what Christ done. Now, yes, Christ has done a lot of great things. Christ is our Lord and Savior, but Christ also came down. He did the Father's work. The people say that him and a higher God is one and the same, and they're not the same. Because if Christ was down here saving us, who is up in heaven sitting on the throne ruling? Give me, uh, give me, give me five. Uh, seven. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. The laws or the prophets. The Ten Commandments is the laws. Prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, people who came before Christ. Christ uh, people like... Uh, Enoch, these were all prophets that came before him. Go ahead, brother. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill, meaning complete, to get it done. He, he did not come to change anything. He came to fulfill those laws. You didn't hear Christ say, I came to change something. He came to fulfill it. And a lot of times, people say the laws are done away with, but you do not see that in the Bible. It's right there where it said, continue to read, brother. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Heaven and the earth has not passed. It's still here. I don't know about y'all, but it's still here. We still breathing there. That sun's still rising and setting. The moon is still coming up. It has not passed away. So that means those laws are still here. Whoever tell you laws and statutes are going away, you take them to that right there. You take them to Matthew 17, verse 18. And they'll show you that he's, Christ never said the laws were done away with. That's a man who was saying that. Because they don't want to go to the laws, statutes, commandments. Because it, it, shows, it, it shows their bad habits. We had these preachers out here. They'll, they'll tell you, the Christian preachers tell you, you know, the laws, statutes done away with. But they're not. It, high, it, it exposes their bad habits. And they don't want that. Go ahead, read, brother. This is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that, but that the world through him might be saved. God sent his son, Yeshua, to save the world, not to condemn it. If he, didn't want to, if he didn't want to save the world, he would not send his son down here to die for our sins. He sent his only begotten son. Why, why would he do that if he didn't love us? God sacrificed his own son for a sinner like me, like you, like everyone out here. Do we appreciate it? Some do. A lot of us don't. Continue your reading, brother. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is, be, is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Men love darkness rather than light. So that means if he's saying right there, straight out the Bible, that means if you don't believe in Christ, you're condemned already. You're done. There's no need of us explaining anything to you. If you already believe that, you got atheists that believe that, and they sit up there and say, oh, I'd rather deal with hell, I'd rather go to hell. No, you don't. You don't have no idea what hell is like. He is giving you a chance, which is called repentance. That means to change, ask for forgiveness. 
you know, do a 180 degree turn. People say, yo, you gotta do a 360. No, 360 is just a complete circle. You looking back at where you just left. 180 degrees, you completely turned your back and you not looking back. You looking forward, you looking at the most high, you looking at Christ. You looking at star, uh, his law, statutes, and commandments. Saying, what, what am I doing wrong? You follow them, you going down each one of them and saying, you know what? Okay, this is wrong. Uh, statute commandment number seven. Um, Got to relate to our people. Like, we up here for a reason. We trying to shed the light on our people and wake them up. Our people. The so-called Negroes, African Americans, or, or whatever they want to, that we be called, that we accept. But um, from our captives or whoever, the government powers. But um, I'm going to quote, we're going to come from the Bible, though, and let the God that created everybody, the God that sent his son, Christ, speak for everybody. So, um, Isaiah, 42, yeah, give me the book of um, Isaiah. But this is the people chapter robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. You heard that, people? We are hid. Israel, who the Bible refers to the people that in America, they told us that we was African Americans and Negroes and all these other names that the God that created everybody doesn't say. Because it's only one people. When, when I was in prison, like I said, our people filled the prison. I mean, our people was in there like cattle. I mean, I seen the so-called white people, I seen a few Arabics, some Asians, but our people was like cattle there. So the Most High is trying to talk to our people. He always is letting us know who we was according to his, his book, our book, the Bible, King James Version, Holy Bible. And read again, my brother, read the, read, um, yeah, read the whole thing. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. But thou hast not called upon Jacob, upon me, O Jacob. No, that's right. It's 42, 22, excuse me. This is book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. But this is the people robbed and spoiled. They are uh, all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith. But most of our people is in what you call, you call it the hood now. The ghetto snared in holes. We in there with with um we'll run we amongst the pestilence, the roaches, rats, whatever you want to say. Our neighborhoods look like a like a bomb got blew up in there with trash everywhere. And then, like I said, we infested with these drugs and all that. It say snared in in holes. And it's talking about our people because the Bible can relate to all time and talks about us being, like I said, filled in prison houses. We stand in a ghetto. And like I said, the most Christ, who y'all who y'all call Jesus, he came from the ghetto also. We can read that out we the scriptures in the, too. In the ghetto and the slums. You know, we used to have a neighborhood. We used to have a community. And you couldn't, you, we, was, we, we was together as people. Okay, can you? Okay, read. This is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 43. The day following Jesus, excuse me, the day following Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? You heard that? He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because Nazareth was the ghetto. And Christ, who is our original bloodline of our people, of our people, the so-called African Americans, we can relate to Christ in every, in every way. The only thing Christ died for our, for, you know, his people. The, the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible, and we are them same people. And we hear, he came from the ghetto, they said, is, is anything good that come out of Nazareth? Because that's just like all our people up here, we are here trying to be the light to our people and any other race 
the Gentiles also. Gentile only mean none Israelite. Shalom, everybody. My brother Abiyah, Cleveland from the Gather Christ Church. And I, um, you know, I want to speak about, you know, um, love. You know, because God is love. So we're gonna first go into um. First John chapter four verse seven. Got it. We read here from First John chapter four verse seven. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of the Most High. Okay. Okay. okay you see that? It says, "Let us love one another," because what? Love is of the Most High. Because love is of the Most High God. So we should love one another. Do it. Do 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 anything. You know. Do. Do drama, if, if somebody done you wrong or wronged you, you know, your brother should come to you. It's saying in Matthew 18, 15. So if you have an art with your brother, your brother should come to you. And y'all should talk out y'all differences. And you, should, and, he, and you should gain your brother back. So show love because God is love. And everyone, and everyone that loveth is born of the most high and know of the most high. See? So if you love, you know what I'm saying? God is love. So if you love, so you know the most high. So the most high sus suspects you to love and forgive. Next one. Yeah, um, let me get um let me get Matthew, Matthew 5 and 23. Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembrance that thy brother have all against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Okay, okay. So, so, so what Christ is saying right here, you know, say if you bring a, a, a gift to the altar, and you have an ark with your brother, Knowing, no one said, knowing, knowing you bring this gift to the altar, but you remember that you got to art with your brother. He ain't trying to accept that. Christ ain't trying to, he, he is not trying to hear that. So put, so put the gift down and go find your brother and settle that with your brother first. Because ain't no way you're going to come to Christ now let's get and have an art with your brother Matthew, and uh, you're going to hear what you're Matthew, saying. Matthew 18 no. and 15. No, Christ don't get down like that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him. Excuse me. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him, and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Right. Okay, so, so like I was saying earlier, like if you have a problem with your brother, or he offended you, like if I had a problem with my brother right here, I should go to him and him alone and tell him my problem that I had with him. Not go in front of a crowd or, you know what I'm saying, or try to embarrass him in front of everybody or say this and say that in front of everybody because if I do that, then, you know, a, a, a sense of pride going to come up. He going to feel like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying, you trying to embarrass me in front of everybody, man, you know, I don't like that. So I ain't going to game my brother like that. I should come to him in private. And say, hey, brother, man, hey, man, I, I ain't like what you said, man. And, you know, it kind of offended me a little bit. You know, you know, you take that back. And I'm like, all right, all right, but I'm sorry, man. You know what I'm saying? My bad. I'm sorry for doing that. You forgive me. Okay, yeah. No, so then he forgive me. Now, 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 now I ain't gave my brother back. Now I ain't gave my brother. So that's how you do that. When somebody offend you, pull him to the side. Don't let pride get in the way and, and, Trying to bash your brother or sister? Don't do that. Because the word don't say do that. The word say go to your brother alone, alone and him alone. And explain yourself to your brother. 